Welcome to Matt's Metalworking. In this video I will be going over some of the cleanup and preparation for my lathe. I purchased this lathe just over a year ago. It's a 1948 South Bend 9A with a 48 inch bed. Slowly splitting down the assembly, component by component, the tool post first. Overall this lathe was well taken care of and actually needs minimal maintenance. I purchased this off an estate sale, so its history has been quite limited, unfortunately. First, starting with disassembly of the carriage, I noticed some chip buildup in behind the apron. Next was the compound rest. You may notice some yellowing on the bare steel. When we picked up this lathe, it actually started raining about halfway through, loading it into the truck and trailer. So, as a layer of protection, I sprayed the lathe down with some packaging oil. Thread dial, removing the bolts and then lifting off the saddle, lead screw bushing bracket support, now removing the apron which is held in place with the lead screw, sliding off the tailstock. I then cleaned up the packaging oil with some degreaser and a rag. This stuff wipes off fairly easy with degreaser. It can quickly become sticky and provide excellent protection against moisture. Even with a light coat it does seem to go a long way with adding protection on the bare metal. Managed to pick up this little baking pan as well, fits perfectly under the lathe. If I remember right it was only about $15, has high enough size and it's large enough so I have plenty of movement room under the carriage. It does need to be tipped out in order for it to clear the drain plug on the apron, but at least I don't have to worry about it falling out. Perfect for catching any chips, oil, and if I have any small parts that fall off, I don't have to chase them around on the floor. I used an old toothbrush to clean up most of the old chip debris and oil. It's kind of a tight place to work, but the toothbrush does a great job. You could probably use a paintbrush as well. You can kind of see the pan, how much build up there is. After most of the debris was removed, I finished up with a rag and degreaser. It's a good idea to wear rubber gloves too, provide some protection against the chips and either from cuts or slivers. For a final clean and protection against moisture, I sprayed it down with WD-40 and then wiped the excessive oil off with a rag. Apparently the previous owner was a motorcycle builder. The lathe did seem to be used quite a bit. However, the ways and even just the overall condition is in excellent shape. Cleaning up the threaded dial using a degreaser in the drain pan. I won't be fully disassembling the apron, but just enough to clean the old lubricant and any chips. Again, spraying it down with degreaser and using a toothbrush when I need to agitate the surface. I might make a video a little more in depth on the basic disassembly of the carriage, either for repairs or transportation. The carriage is quite heavy. Actually, the whole lathe in general does weigh a fair amount. So for moving, if you can split more parts off of it, it does make the machine much lighter. Once I was done with the cleanup, I applied new lubricant. Instead of the traditional oil which is required for the lathe, after doing a little research I switched over, personally I think of a more modern replacement. Something that reduces friction, withstands heat better, and has better surface retention. I'll save that for another video if there are people interested in that, so be sure to leave a comment below. I used some medium grade thread locker on the carriage bolts to prevent them from seizing and so they don't come loose during vibrations. Once everything is back together, I adjusted the gibs on the cross slide to remove any play so it can maintain accuracy and nothing moves around when cutting. Now for wiring, as you can see it's quite exposed, not easy to keep clean and not exactly as tidy as I like it. I picked up a roll of 25 foot half inch polyethylene split loop casing. I also bought cleaner looking clamps with rubber inserts. This should keep the wiring clean and free of any debris. Eventually I will probably redo the wiring when I have more time. I had some more footage saved for this, but unfortunately I had some issues with my SD card and wasn't able to salvage it. So instead, you'll be seeing what the final results once everything's done. The wiring is now protected from hot chips and oil. This will be much easier to keep clean than compared to the loose wires. 
While there was old clamps, I've upgraded to something a little cleaner looking too, which just fastens on the one side. Electrical tape was also applied to the open ends, keeping everything closed. And cable ties were used to tie the loose wires up. Another addition to this shed was an LED work light. So this will keep my videos better lit and it's a better workspace for me. I had the shed previously wired so I can run an extension cord out here. The light is hooked up to a receptacle in the ceiling and controlled by a switch. This concludes the rest of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below and throw a like my way. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more metalworking videos. Thank you for watching.